Good afternoon. All right. So I want to, uh, first of all, I haven't really had a chance to welcome the group to conference. So thanks, Bruce. That's better. So first off, welcome to conference. I haven't had a chance to address the entire group. I've been with several smaller groups uh, over the last couple of days. But uh, welcome, and thank you for the work that you do across the state. I want to just spend a few minutes with you uh, today before you go into your breakout sessions and talk a little bit about um, the impact of the work we do. And, and uh, you know, as I've stepped into this job July 3rd and, and started talking to our stakeholders and constituents and people across the state, one thing that became very clear is that we have a wonderful organization made up of people that truly care about the citizens of North Dakota. So, you know, whether that's 4-H and youth development programming, family and uh, community wellness programming, ag and natural resource programming, the work that we do truly does have an impact. So I want to sh share with you a, a couple of things relative to that. You all know that we've moved to PEARS, and Ron, what does PEARS stand for? I think I got to get my district directors all on the same page about what what pairs stands for. So I went into pairs uh, to uh, find a few success stories because I wanted to talk just a little bit about that, and I want to emphasize uh, the need for us to continue to to utilize that to uh, put those success stories in, tell our story, uh, use it to um, help your administrative team understand better the work that you're doing. And so I do have a few prizes this afternoon. So I'm going to do what I call my director's pick. So going into pairs, you can download, export uh, all the success story reports that have been done for the calendar year. So I did that. And I've got two people that did uh, really outstanding work in terms of volume of success stories. So are Lou Morehouse and uh, Linda Kuster here? So Lou and Linda had uh, 14 and 15 success stories each in pairs. Nobody else even really came close to that, by the way. <laughs> so I also want to highlight just a few. I picked out a few across the spectrum of what we're doing. And I, I, I'm going to give you a little head start on Halloween. So. Each year, as individuals, you're putting in these success stories. I know some of you have got teams, so feel free to share this with your team if you're working in more of a team environment with these. But uh, Megan Mirdal, Glean, North Dakota. Where's Megan? Now, Megan, Megan should know that my wife was really jealous that she saw this. Hershey's glow-in-the-dark candy. She wanted to keep it. You're going to get it. Jerry Stucka, calving procedures. You saw that actually on the screen. <laughs> Crystal Shoneman, right in the heart of the Palmer Amaranth uh, stuff that's going on. Great work. <laughs> Tom Peters made you do the Palmer Amaranth work or made you report the success story? Where's Tom Kelb? His gardening foreman. Tom. Tom. All right. I'll trust you. <laughs> All right, a couple more here. So Jody Bruins, dealing with difficult people. Nice job, Jody. So last but not least, 
Nicole Smith, Dunn County Food Pantry. Where's Nicole? So what I want you to notice about uh, these stories and the success stories, what I picked up on, and it really dovetails with what Chuck talked about, these are really ways that we are impacting lives of citizens. It's about the relationships that we've built. And so whether that's uh, weed control programs that we're, we're working on with Palmer Amaranth, or whether that's a food, food pantry issue, whether that's a horticulture issue, we're developing relationships with our constituents, with our citizens, with the people out there. So part, part of what I wanna do here is encourage you to continue to submit success stories because it's important for me to, to be able to gather that sort of information and use that to talk to our decision makers. Leads me to my next point. So we're heading in the legislative session. Uh, we need your help. Uh, some of you have heard this message already, but in the next couple of weeks, each of your offices will be getting some additional information on ways that you can engage your citizen advisory boards in helping them tell our story with legislators. And so we really want you to engage those citizen groups, engage the people you're impacting, and help them help us talk to those decision makers. And so I've got uh, Dwayne Houck working on some information. Uh, we've had a number of citizen advisory groups already ask for ways that they can be helpful. So we're gonna do a little coaching with them. We're gonna give them some ways that they can help have that conversation. And we want you to, to then in turn, make sure that they get that information. So engage those citizen advisory boards, engage those local constituents, make sure that, that those legislators, especially after the election, are hearing about what we're doing heading into the legislative session. You may have noticed that we're, uh, we, we have made the decision to uh, open up or, or refund a number of our professional development programs. And that really uh, is in large part because we're able to uh, look at this from the lens of wanting to make sure that our people are equipped to go out and do the work that we need to do. And that includes the themes that Chuck talked about, investing in yourself, making sure that you're technically competent, making sure that we've got people trained to step into leadership roles, whether that's at a county level, area level, state level, but we want to make sure that we've got that pipeline going of investment in, in those opportunities because it makes a difference in terms of how the organization runs. So you'll continue to see us uh, offer those opportunities, invest in you as our employees. We, we wanna make sure that you're aware of those and, and taking active advantage to those opportunities as you go forward. Lastly, I want to challenge you just a bit. Uh, this, this conference is about innovation. This conference is about how do we innovate. And so I want you, as you go home tomorrow, to think about what innovations are you going to take back to your local citizens? What innovations are you going to help them implement in your 4-H programs, in your family and community wellness programs, in your ag and natural resource programs? And what innovations are you gonna do personally to help you be a better extension employee? What innovations are you gonna do to help you be a better NDSU employee? What innovations are you gonna implement in your personal lives to be a better husband, mother, father, and so on? As you think about this innovation theme, we want you focused on the things that you can do to, to kind of focus on that continuous professional improvement. And so as I, as I leave you here this afternoon, uh, I just wanna again thank you for the great work that you're doing. Thank you for the investment you're making, taking time out of your schedules to be here at conference, to engage in these networking opportunities, to engage in the professional development opportunities because it's important. So have a great rest of the conference and we'll see you uh, as we move through the, the rest of the year. Thank you.